Hello, hello, Regis Kilbin is the name, and Hearthstone is the game. And today I'm taking a look at my 10 top druid cards. So these are the 10 best cards historically for the druid class. Now I'm not counting neutral cards, certainly some neutral cards have been important to every class, but these are specifically just druid based cards. So if you're a new player, I hope this list uh, helps kind of guide you down a path to select cards for your deck that are strong or, or maybe give you a guide towards crafting really powerful cards. If you're an experienced player who already has all these cards and is familiar with Druid, then I hope this is an entertaining look at what I think uh, the best Druid card is and, and how I rank them that might be uh, enjoyable for you to see. So uh, without further delay, let's go ahead and jump into my 10 top Druid cards, uh, starting with number 10, and that is actually a newer one from the Grand Tournament. This is Darnassus Aspirant. This 2-mana two 2-3 two, basically attaches a wild growth to a body, and since Druids are really about ramping up their mana availability, Darnassus Aspirant allows you to do that while also still developing a board presence, which is something Druid always struggled with. They kind of had to play a catch-up game the whole game because they play wild growth, uh, but not be able to play a minion simultaneously, so they had to rely on taunts and other fallbacks, which sometimes uh, made their decks less optimized than they'd ideally like. Uh, but this one still gives you the opportunity to ramp from the battle cry effect while defending yourself from really hyper-aggressive decks. Of course, there is the death rattle that you lose a mana crystal, and sometimes that will happen. It will almost always happen, but it might survive for a turn or two, which allows you to ramp out more powerful stuff uh, like turns three through five in the mid game or potentially even in the late game which can make a big difference getting out like a druid of the claw on turn four or a piloted shredder turn early can make a huge difference so Darnassus Aspirant allows you to do that without compromising your board presence. At number nine let's go ahead and take a look at a card I just mentioned druid of the claw this 5-mana minion has a ton of flexibility, which is always what's made it so good in Druid. Uh, Druids are often very aggressive as far as doing damage to the enemy's face, so they can set up for their powerful Force of Nature Savage Roar combo, which we'll talk about in detail much later. So this can be good to just uh, charge at the enemy face, chip off 4 damage, and put them in range. Uh, you'll often use it as a taunt as well, just to contest the board or uh, preserve your life total for a turn or two while... Uh, either getting to the 9 mana uh, point for the combo or just uh, digging for cards and buying yourself time. So the flexibility of Druid of the Claw has made it pretty much a mainstay in every Druid deck uh, for eternity. At number 8, I'd look, like to look at Keeper of the Grove. This 4 mana minion uh, doesn't exactly have the strongest body as a 2-4 for 4 mana. That's pretty miserable. That's like a 2 or 3 mana body. But its effects are incredible. Uh, choose one, deal two damage. That's great sometimes for sniping a really threatening minion like a knife juggler that's behind a taunt. You can just uh, ping it down. Uh, you can also silence minions with Keeper of the Grove, which is wonderful for really scary stuff like a Tyrion Forging or a Sylvanas. It's also good for getting a taunt out of the way, setting up for a next turn lethal with the combo. And Keeper of the Grove historically has been fantastic against aggressive decks because if you play a Wild Growth or a Darnassus Aspirant on turn 2, you can play this guy on turn 3 and ping off something like a Flame Imp while also developing a body that contests uh, low-cost minions. So it's a really nice aggro stopper that has tons of late-game utility as well, which makes it a very flexible and very valuable card no matter when you draw it. At number 7, we're going to look next door to Swipe. This 4-mana area of effect spell is one of uh, Druid's really only board clear options. It does 4 damage to its primary target and then 1 damage to all other enemies. So this is great for killing something like a Piloted Shredder and, and 3 Silverhand Recruits from a, from a Paladin. Or lots of Imps from a Warlock. It's great at finishing off enemies that have... Uh, been weakened down to enemy minions that are at one health that uh, you don't want to attack their face with your hero power. It's also just good at doing damage to the enemy face from time to time, getting them in combo range and setting you up for lethal in a future turn. So Swipe is really one of the better area of effect spells in the game simply because 
it hits multiple things, and sometimes it also will just kill a four health thing that's in your way, or that's scary. So the single target effect and the area of effect nature of it and the way it's balanced makes it better than other four mana spells like Consecration, for instance, just because you can use it in more flexible ways. And of course, flexibility is really Druid's uh, game. At number six, we're going to look at another spell. This is Wrath. This two-mana spell allows you to do one of two things. You can hit something for three damage, uh, hit a minion specifically, or you can do one damage to a minion and draw a card. Yet yeah, another flexible card that gives Druid a lot of leeway. Sometimes you'll just have to use this as a three damage removal spell. If you've like, uh, if you've swipe Wrath, a uh, Doctor Boom, for instance, you can kill the Boom and his Boom bots for six mana, which isn't too bad. Uh, many other times you'll want to ping off a one health thing and simultaneously draw a card, which is always good. Sometimes uh, druids have to draw cards because they've spent all their hand with innervates or wild growth ramping for mana, and then they have an empty hand and they have to refuel, and that's exactly what Wrath will allow you to do. And this thing has been in virtually every druid deck forever because it's good in aggressive decks, it's good in late game decks, it's just got tons of versatility. At number five, we're going to take another look next door, Wild Growth. This card is, we mentioned it earlier, much like Darnassus Aspirant, all about, it's all about ramping up your mana with no downside like Darnassus Aspirant. So historically in Druid, this has been in every late game Druid deck and it has been key to the success of those kinds of decks because it does allow them to get to big stuff like Ancient of War or Sylvanas or Cenarius, all those big scary minions that Druid loves. And it also allows them to get to their combo turn a little earlier. So Wild Growth's great in that regard. It's also uh, fine in the late game because Blizzard thankfully added in a pretty neat mechanic where if you draw this on turn 10, it's not useless. You can still cast it and draw a card. So it's a late game cycle card. Making it very good at any point in the game. Sometimes you'll have to play it on turn 5 just to get to a Dr. Boom sooner. It's great on turn 2 to get out your 4 drops faster. There are so many different things that Wild Growth can do. And even with Darnassus Aspirant in the game, people still run at least 1 Wild Growth and still usually 2. Just because it's so powerful and so core to the success of Druid. At number 4, we have another mana ramping card. This time it's Innervate. The zero mana spell allows you to gain two mana crystals this turn only. So Innervate really is just all about tempo and gaining a quicker advantage in the game. On turn five, you can Innervate out something like uh, an Ancient of Lore to draw some cards and deposit a big body. It's a great play. If you have two Innervates, right, you could even do that on turn three or, or even turn um, two with two Innervates and a coin, which is just insane. So Innervate really just allows you to make crazy plays that you would otherwise never be able to accomplish, like Force of Nature plus Savage Roar plus Savage Roar for 22 damage from an empty board. Uh, it is a little bit risky because sometimes you can draw it on an empty hand in the late game and it's totally useless, but that's made up for by the times it just absolutely wins your games by coining out a Piloted Shredder on, on turn two, or innervating out a Piloted Shredder on turn two and winning the game with, with 12 extra damage from an unanswered Piloted Shredder, right? So. Innervate certainly has risk, but the reward payoff is so much higher that this card is integral to virtually every druid deck ever. At number three, a card we just mentioned, uh, Ancient of Lore. This is really just, I think, one of the best cards in the entire game. For seven mana, you get a really nice 5-5 five, five body, which... And virtually every metagame has always been strong enough to mean something. It can test stuff like a Sludge Belcher fine. It doesn't die to Piloted Shredder. It just has the right stats. And you get a crazy draw two cards, which is just perfect for Druids. Because as I mentioned before, sometimes they can have an empty hand from Wild Growths or Innervates and uh, moving through their hand really quickly. So this is the refill and refuel option while also giving you a really strong body. Uh, it has the best artwork in the game, I think. I just love the way Ancient of Lore looks. Also, you can choose to restore 5 health, which is not usually what this card is going to be for. Probably only 5% of the time will you ever use it to restore health. But sometimes that can win you games if you're playing a really aggressive like Aggro Shaman or a Hunter, and you just need another turn to survive to get to combo. Ancient of Lore might just buy you that turn. 
thanks to the heel. So a little bit of flexibility is needed, but really just a ton of value packed into one card and seven mana, thanks to the solid body and the draw card effect. And it's a staple in every druid deck ever. It's a little expensive to craft as an epic, but if you ever plan on playing a lot of druid, it's certainly worth it. And then finally, our final two cards. Um, you probably won't be surprised by these if you've played a lot of druid. And I'm picking this order very deliberately at number two. I have Force of Nature. This, of course, is part of the Force of Nature plus Savage Roar combo that druids are famed for. And it's really what makes druids so strong is that at any given point after turn nine, uh, the opponent has to have more than 14 life or they risk dying to an empty board Force of Nature combo with Savage Roar that does exactly 14 damage. This part of it summons the three 2-2 two, two Tree Ants that have Charge, which is 6 damage on its own, and sometimes 6 damage Force of Nature is just enough to win you the game. You only need a handful of damage if you don't have both parts of the combo. Other times it can be used as a clear if there are a couple really scary knife jugglers or something on the board that you have to get rid of and you don't have the combo yet. Force of Nature is fine for that. But really, this card is all about the combo and really just putting opponents on a clock where they can't go below 14 or they're waiting for the game to end as soon as you get their com as soon as you get your combo. So it is what makes Druid so good. And Druid wouldn't be much of a class without the combo, frankly. So if it ever gets nerfed, they might be in trouble. But it's been around forever and it has made Druid relevant for literally years. So the second half of that combo actually takes the number one spot on my list. The best druid card in my mind is actually Savage Roar. This is the second half of the combo that gives your characters plus two attack. So you summon your three string ants, they all get four attack. Your hero also gets plus two attack. So that's four times three is 12, plus two is 14 damage for the Force of Nature Savage Roar combo. But the reason I choose Savage Roar over Force of Nature as my number one card is because sometimes Savage Roar can win you the game even without Force of Nature. Druid has a lot of big minions. They tend to ramp out cards really quickly, so sometimes you'll just have three or four minions on the board, and Savage Roar will allow you to win the game all on its own, and you won't even need the second half of Force of Nature. There have been Druid decks that don't even run Force of Nature, but will throw in one Savage Roar just for the opportunity to get those random kills where Savage Roar is just enough extra damage. Savage Roar can also be used on its own. It's not as good as a single card as is Force of Nature, but sometimes uh, just poking out a little bit extra damage if you have a mana luxury can be okay. If you have like two minions on board and you just want to do six extra damage to their face to set them up, that's sometimes all right. You can also use this as a clear if you're in a real pinch and have to get rid of something particularly threatening, or you want your minions to trade up into uh, higher health stuff than their normal attack could could handle. So Savage Roar has some extra utility, I think, than does Force of Nature, and that's why it takes the number one spot for me, but primarily because it's just the card that seals the deal for druids everywhere, and it's the one card everyone hates to see, and the sound it makes typically means that the game is over for your opponents, and that is always a very rewarding and nice thing to hear, and that to me is why Savage Roar is the single best card in druids. So there you have it. Those are my top 10 Druid cards. If you have those in your collection, you're going to be in a pretty good spot for building some really strong and powerful Druid decks. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, game on!